scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Lord, we bless you. Give him praise. We give you all the glory. We worship you. family can we just lift up our hands and say lord we thank you we bless you inside and outside lift up your hands as we worship lord we give you praise you have done great things great things in our midst thank him for the miracles thank him for the manifestation of his word thank him for salvation Lord, we give you praise. We come with grateful hearts. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you who have been here for a while you understand that we are a grateful people hallelujah we'll never forget his benefits hallelujah psalm 103 says bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his name said bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits who forgiveth our sins who healeth our diseases and delivereth us from destruction and so Every time we come before his presence, it's good to just worship him and to give him praise for life, for health, for his word, access to his word. Hallelujah. Said the entrance of thy word, give it light. Light, understanding, even unto the simple. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. Thank you because tonight you will do great things in our midst. We have come for koinonia, a time of intimacy. We pray that you speak from the throne and cause that our ears hear the voice of our King in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just walk up to 20 people. Tell them it's good to see you again. Your presence gives me hope that we are coming. Come on, walk up to 20 people inside and outside don't be antisocial is part of koinonia
That's all right. You can go back to your seat. I appreciate the Lord. The Bible says, and Mary had do it good like medicine. Please be seated. Hallelujah. We are so grateful for the things that God is doing in our midst. Hallelujah. God is doing great and awesome things. We've been celebrating the wonder-working power of God in our midst. Hallelujah. And the transforming power of His Word. We thank Him for the opportunity to receive from Him again. Hallelujah. We've been taking a series on the kingdom. And... Um, Angels still speak. Hallelujah. Where people who believe in the realm of the spirit and the operation of spirit beings. The Bible says, Here I come to Mount Zion, and it lets us know we are not alone. Hallelujah. Three days ago, a friend of mine called me early in the morning. And um, she said, Josh, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay, what's, what's, what's wrong? And she said, I had a dream. And I got a song from that dream. And I want to share it with you. I said, really? And she said, it was a dream. I was ministering somewhere. And she was not even in the ground where the meeting was. And she had the song. It was a powerful song from the Spirit. And she heard my voice. I was singing it. And um, it was so powerful according to her description. She said the place was so charged. There were all kinds of miracles. People repenting, opening up their hearts to the Lord. And um, when she woke up, she came with a song. And I want to teach us the song. Very powerful. It's our culture to receive heavenly songs and communicate them. Hallelujah, because we are a family. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing the song. I'd like you to receive it in your spirit. Many of you just like new songs. Thank God for the next one. No, 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 no. You see, God gives songs to announce seasons. Hallelujah. Jewish songs were used to announce seasons. So when you heard a Jew sing, it will give you an understanding of the seasons that they were in. If it was a Passover, they had songs. If it was the Day of Atonement called Yom Kippur, they had songs that they would sing. And so I believe that this song came prophetically, coinciding with the great things that God is doing in this season. Hallelujah. Very powerful song. The song is a revelation of uh, Matthew 21, the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just listen and let it bless your heart. Are you ready, people? Hallelujah. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. There's a part that says Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Which verse can you help me? Holy. Oh, holy. Just listen to the song and let it enter your spirit. Unedited, we didn't change it exactly as it came from the realm of the spirit. In the name of our God. Sing holy. Who comes in 
the city see who comes in the night. Can we try it now? The whole congregation, holy, can you sing it? Oh, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, 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 holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, yeah. Worship us, sing holy. Just the worship us. Help me worship us. Holy, holy, blessed is He. It was a triumphant entry in the name of our God. And he rode upon an ass that no man had sat upon. And every time I believe that this song coincides with the season, God is announcing to us that it's a season, a triumphant entry, riding upon a horse. And that's why we are joining him to sing Hosanna. We are saying Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of One more time. Hosanna, Hosanna. understand what you are communicating and we release our spirits Lord we align with the heavens you have brought this song from the realm of the spirit unedited to confirm a season that you are bringing us into Lord indeed we declare blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. In one minute, just say, Lord, I receive. I connect my spirit with the revelation of this song. A triumphant entry into our destinies, into the new levels of grace, new levels of his spirit. Oh, let it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we hear your voice and we yield our spirits. Like Samuel before the ark, we declare, speak for we are listening. We have ears to hear that which you communicate unto us in the secret. Lord, we are ready to declare it as ambassadors upon the mountaintop. We open up our spirits for this season of triumphant entry. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, friends, let me tell you something. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear Him. And He will show them His covenants. When you make God's ways your way, He will communicate to you the things of the Spirit. So that you will align yourself in this realm with what is happening in the Spirit. That's the secret of success. That's the secret of increase. That's the secret of impact. That it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Until you understand the operation of the heavens, you have no right to do anything on the earth. And it's our job here at Koinonia to listen. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, I will stand upon the watch, my watch, and set myself upon the tower. And I will see what the Lord will say. Bible says, what I show you in the secret, declare thou on the mountain top. And it's our job to rest our ears on the heart of the Father to hear what He's communicating for every season. God is preparing us, training us, fashioning us by His Spirit to make us relevant even in this time and in this season. And hear me friends, if you found your way into this place, I'd like you to know that God brought you by His Spirit to build, to equip, to empower you. He said, rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. It takes understanding. He said he made many lights, but he made two great lights. One light to rule in the day and another light to rule in the night. If you don't have that light, you cannot rule in the day and you cannot rule in the night. There is a dimension of light that grants you access even in the night so that you rule. And God is communicating these lights and these truths unto us. And Father, we thank you. It's a privilege and we respect it. We don't just believe in you, we respect you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated. We began a series last week on the kingdom. Hallelujah. How many of us were blessed last week? Praise God. We began to establish. Please take out your pen, your writing materials. It's a teaching, so... As much as possible whenever you're coming for a meeting like this come with your writing materials god is teaching and building us there's only so much your mind can at a time blessed be the name of the lord and so i began a teaching last week and i began to explain to us the concept of the kingdom how that the word kingdom comes from two words it means the domain of the king hallelujah how many of us still remember that and we began to explain how that in the system of God, the kingdom of God is everywhere the influence and the, the authority, the rulership, the dominion of the king is exercised, is permitted to find expression. Hallelujah. And we began to talk about the concept of a colony and a motherland. How many of you remember that? We began to explain how that a colony is a replica of a mother kingdom. And that every time a colony is created, it is created either by conquest. You fight and gain access to that colony. Or you find a virgin land and occupy it. Hallelujah. The, a colony is, is meant to be an extension of the mother kingdom. And I did tell us that in a kingdom system, everything around a kingdom system revolves around the king. Hallelujah. In a democracy, we have people living for themselves. For instance... In America, you can decide to walk up naked. I can decide to walk naked tomorrow. And when people say, Josh, are you okay? I say, what is your business? We are in a democracy. But in a kingdom system, everyone lives for the king. Hallelujah. If at any point you were found doing anything that was contrary to the counsel of the king, you were termed a rebel. Hallelujah. And I began to explain to us that we are not just believers. We are not just born again Christians. But we are citizens of a kingdom hallelujah and that means we owe our loyalty and allegiance not just to our savior not just to our lord but to our king many know him as savior many know him as lord but few know him as king and daniel speaking said that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and isaiah reiterating said of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end 
and God is preparing us to understand the concept and the structure of the kingdom because for many people Christianity is just a blind race a race out of hell to heaven and we stop there and there are many believers who are not partnering with the Holy Spirit and every time you see our posters when we write koinonia we write intimacy and partnership that we understand his ways in intimacy and then we partner with him hallelujah praise the Lord and then we began to explain how that man was given dominion Adam was given a kingdom are you listening to me Adam was not given a religion he was given a kingdom Genesis 1 26 he said have dominion the word dominion is a language of royalty it says rule and Adam lost and gave the keys to Satan hallelujah and I did tell us that the entire Bible can be summarized thus the king has a kingdom and out of his love desires to extend his rule and leadership and influence through citizens in the colony of his kingdom called earth hallelujah and for a period of time man walked in the council of the kingdom he sent his governor the governor of the kingdom is the spirit of god i told us the concept of the governor that the governor is sent by the mother kingdom to bring the citizens of the colony to alignment with the values the culture the principles of the mother kingdom that's the primary assignment of the governor he's a representative of the king hallelujah and then he begins to educate and reorient the citizens of that strange land and he begins to cause them to conform with the culture and the character of the king and there are certain benefits when they assume position as kingdom citizens every kingdom has systems has an economic system to meet the economic needs of the people has a political system every kingdom has a system for rest and and all of these things we are going to be discussing it hallelujah there are many believers who do not understand the assignment of a true christian on the earth for many of us we think our assignments are just to win souls and one day fly to heaven or run away from hell or get married and have children and grow old and then say i've contributed my quota to the planet there's more hallelujah say after me i am an ambassador a representative of the kingdom hallelujah and so from genesis chapter 3 until um matthew chapter 1 the coming of jesus he was the kingdom lost you can summarize everything the kingdom was lost hallelujah it was not god's original design for the nation of israel to have kings he desired their king it's out of their strong heart and they were a stiff-necked people hallelujah and so he told samuel to go and anoint saul and then david and all the kings that followed it was an attempt to preserve the structure of kingdom so that when jesus came into the scene it would not be a strange thing hallelujah so the nation of israel understood the concept of kingdom and then jesus showed up john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god hallelujah and when jesus stepped upon the planet he began to speak about the kingdom hallelujah started talking about the kingdom the kingdom of heaven is like unto this the kingdom of god is like unto this he began to liken the kingdom to many things and all through his work on earth he was bringing people into an understanding of the structure of his kingdom when he showed love it was a manifestation of the love of the father when he walked miracle signs and wonders it was a demonstration of the superiority of his kingdom and then he began to introduce the disciples to the governor in chapter 15 and 16 he began to speak to them about one he called the paracletus the comforter the standby the advocate the helper the strengthener the guide the holy spirit hallelujah and i did tell us that jesus for our sake he came to restore the kingdom hear me the primary purpose of jesus was not to come and take us to heaven don't stone me yet it's a teaching hallelujah the primary purpose of jesus was to restore the kingdom to restore the kingdom that's why revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says we have been made unto our god a kingdom of priests and we shall rule in this life in this earth hallelujah 
and Jesus began to suffer as an exchange all that he was doing was in exchange to restore the kingdom he was beaten we explained briefly the passion of the Christ how that he went through everything he went through to restore the kingdom hallelujah then he said I will give you the keys of the kingdom he said whatever you bind on earth is what would have been bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth is what would have been lost in heaven he gave us the keys of the kingdom revelations chapter 1 says I am he that was dead and now is alive and I hold the keys hallelujah and so the entire scope of Matthew to John was the redemption as we call it but then it was the restoration of the kingdom are you following me now from Acts chapter 1 down onto Jude is a manifestation of kings a manifestation of those who have now embraced the kingdom and now the Bible begins to give us the the historical work of these people who have embraced the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom and then Paul begins to write in his epistles teaching us the precepts of the kingdom life talked about several issues issues that governed the Holy Spirit our ministry in church leadership marriage and all kinds of things within the context of the kingdom and then the Bible ends in the book of Revelation by giving us an entire scope of the king the entire book of Revelation is a prophetic book that reveals Christ from chapter 1 to chapter 22 hallelujah and then the Bible beautifully ends in chapter 22 with the beginning of a new age lets us know that death hell and the grave were at that time casted into the lake of fire and then the king comes back to a new earth for those of you who are looking forward to run into heaven we are not staying very long there we are coming back to a beautiful city where he will be king of kings and lord of lords and we will reign and rule with him and that begins a new age the word eternity doesn't mean an endless span of time it means a summation of different ages are you following me now right now we're in what we call the church age after the church age there are certain ages a judgment and tribulation and all of that by the way let me encourage you that when the tribulation starts we will not be here on the earth that's a great message of comfort for many of you who have watched all kinds of scary films i'll tell you two reasons number one the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it the church represents the light of the kingdom here on earth darkness cannot manifest until light gives way hallelujah thank you jesus let's continue revelations chapter 11 lord let your word be strong in our hearts God is reorienting us so that we understand that Christianity is a kingdom system it's not just a religion like many others are you listening to me many of us think okay it's just a religion and then one day one day something will happen I will die no 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 and to equip us to be relevant revelations 11 verse 15 if you are there say amen and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom some versions add s the kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever interesting scripture it says the seventh angel is it possible to get this on amplified the seventh angel okay i like the rendition in amplified the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom the systems of this world the word world here is the greek word cosmos the social system of the world he said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our god and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever tonight we'll be continuing in this series we have a lot to cover wherever we can stop let your heart be open 
hallelujah i'll be talking on kingdom advancement it's a continuation of the series kingdom advancement advancing the frontiers of the kingdom we stopped last week by helping us understand that jesus came to restore the kingdom say after me jesus christ came to restore the kingdom and he did restore the kingdom say one more time jesus christ came to restore the kingdom hallelujah and not just to restore the kingdom but to restore the citizens of that kingdom hallelujah that's why he died that's why he went through everything he went through jesus christ bled and he cried he wept was beaten by cruel and wicked people he went through all of these things to restore the kingdom life unto us hallelujah and the next step when you now understand that the kingdom has been restored the next step is to receive the kingdom hallelujah say after me the next step is to receive the kingdom how do you receive the kingdom by embracing the king of that kingdom hallelujah that's what we call being born again hallelujah being born again is simply coming to a point where you experientially accept the message of the king and you allow yourself to now subscribe to the government of that kingdom so when we talk about the new birth experience or what we call born again we're not just talking about some ambiguous thing we're talking about agreeing to come under the governing authority of that king so that you become a true citizen of that kingdom hallelujah that's why you come up and say lord jesus i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me and he said i declare that you are lord of my life hallelujah lord of my life you are the king i choose to submit to your governing authority thereby becoming a bona fide citizen of your kingdom and every time you make that decision as a proof he sends the governor of the kingdom into your life it is such that the governor of the kingdom doesn't just live around us and walk with us but he can live in us hallelujah the holy spirit living in you is proof that you have been accepted as the citizen of that kingdom hallelujah hallelujah are you following me now very very important so you receive the kingdom you embrace the king and his lordship and authority over your life because hitherto by reason of the fallen nature all of us by default submitted in adam to the governing authority of satan hallelujah that's why the bible makes us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom so it is a kingdom the kingdom of darkness into another kingdom he calls it the kingdom of god's dear son so when you get born again that's what happens in the realm of the spirit a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son and the moment that happens to you the governor of the kingdom is sent into your life hallelujah as an unbeliever the holy spirit who is the governor of this kingdom has a primary ministry of convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment john chapter 16 tells us he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment when you now become or enter listen let me tell you something friends getting born again is not all it's just the beginning are you following me now there are so many believers who think that all there is to the christian life or the kingdom life i love to call it is just to get born again and so we get born again there are so many people that get born again and we leave them at the gates of the kingdom they don't know what else to do and they come and say okay so now what am i supposed to do and we say well keep keep praying fast once in a while read your bible and hope that one day the trumpet will blow and the people cannot understand after six months they are caught up with boredom and they cannot understand what kind of system this is hallelujah and they come and they say well i've been born again i say who has not been born again let's continue being born again just remain born again hallelujah but there's more to the kingdom life than just getting born again hallelujah you're being born
born again is only the entrance to the kingdom say after me the entrance to the kingdom it's like when you, you you get born again you are giving your admission letter into the kingdom hallelujah and the moment you get born again there are two things you get familiar with number one is the constitution of the kingdom what we call the bible the bible is the constitution of the kingdom inspired by the governor himself on behalf of the king hallelujah brought to teach and to train the citizens of the kingdom to give them the mindset of the priorities the culture the value the nature hallelujah in this constitution you get to understand the character of your king you get to understand his desire his project his agenda that's what the bible is all about the bible is not just a book for deliverance it's a book that gives you an orientation about the king and his life and his character hallelujah so when you begin to study the bible you begin to understand the nature and the character of the king you understand that this is how he operates we begin to understand that our king is a king of love that the law of the kingdom we live in is the law of love are you following me now we begin to understand these things and then we also begin to enjoy the ministry of the governor the one we call the holy spirit the bible says the whole, when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will begin to expound to you the ways of the kingdom communicating unto you the values of the kingdom hallelujah he will first and foremost walk on your mindset say after me mindset when he walks upon your mindset you come to a point of alignment to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom at first you will go through a lot of conflict the bible makes us to understand in galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 it tells us to walk in the spirit so that we will not desire will not gratify the desires of the flesh he said for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit and both of them are consistently in conflict because they represent the manifestation of two kingdoms are you following me now and so when god begins to introduce you to his system it's usually challenging at first why because it will mean you laying down your ideology and your mindset are you following me now the world system is built upon greed and fear and terror and all of these things and hitherto our lives have been bounded by fear and greed and selfishness but when you come into the kingdom system the governor of the kingdom through the constitution begins to explain to you the modus operandi of the kingdom then you begin to see in the constitution of the kingdom that there is he that scattered and yet increased it. there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty and is antagonistic to the ways of the world hallelujah and the king is such a loving king that he does not force you to do anything he allows your will to come into play so you can choose how far you truly will become the citizen of the kingdom and to represent him and it is given unto the governor to empower as many obedient citizens so that they can prove to the world that they are true citizens of the kingdom that's what we call the anointing the anointing is god's authorization upon your life validating that you are a true citizen of the kingdom hallelujah praise god and so we receive the kingdom by embracing the king when you get born again you receive the kingdom into your life into your heart you receive the governor of the kingdom the one who represents the parliament of heaven here on earth so earth is a colony of heaven and according to god's design and desire he wants that it will happen here in the earth as it is in the heavens and so it's the primary responsibility of the governor to search the mind of the father and find out what it is and to communicate it to the citizens of that kingdom are you getting blessed it's a total paradigm shift from what is being taught in church and let me tell you something everything you ever have and everything you ever become if it does not have its bearing around the kingdom it will kill you that's why we have a lot of rich people who are liabilities to the kingdom because they do not understand the message and the character of the king are you following me now and so you get to meet the governor of the kingdom the holy spirit 
and God designed it in such a way that the moment you are born again your spirit is capable of hearing and recognizing the voice of the governor said my sheep hear my voice he didn't say they are trying to my sheep hear my voice hallelujah for many believers when we get born again then for those that are pentecostals we move a step further we get filled with the holy ghost then you fall under the anointing ba -ba 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 -ba. you just turn and then you get born again and then many people just stop there so what is it about praying in tongues and just moving and then they say just keep praying there's a real devil in this kingdom just keep praying and the person says okay so i'm praying in tongues and he's just praying ba -ba 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 -ba. what is the prayer to what end hallelujah to what end is our bible study to what end is let, let me tell you something if we do not understand our goal and our purpose our spiritual investments will be a burden that's why for many people prayer is a burden for many people the study of god's word is a burden because we don't know to what end it's like a student reading without knowing what he's going to do hallelujah every time you read you understand there is an exam that goal encourages you to read whether or not you are ready to are you following me now when we understand the agenda of the kingdom and the concept of the king it gives us the impetus to want to get everything that the king has for us hallelujah i want you to understand that the king has an agenda say after me the king has an agenda and what is the agenda of the king and the kingdom as i announce this you check your life if you are not directly supporting this agenda you are called a rebel so after this announcement there will be two straight lines drawn in this meeting those who are actively supporting the advancement of the kingdom and those who are becoming liabilities to the king and you are going to hear it very very clearly are you ready to write the agenda of the kingdom very simple the king has an agenda what is his agenda the agenda of the king for this season is that the governing influence of his kingdom be replicated across the earth the governing influence instead of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end the governing influence his character his nature his culture be reproduced across the entire globe hallelujah that's what we call kingdom advancement promoting the character the nature the culture the values of the king and the kingdom that we represent hallelujah and this first occurs in the hearts of men hallelujah the method is to first establish the kingdom in the hearts of men that's what we call soul winning are you following me now but that's only step one to establish the kingdom in the hearts of men to bring them to a point where they like us will subscribe to the government of this king by laying down their lives and saying take over my life and then number two to begin to infiltrate the systems of the world with the values the culture of the king that's what we are going to be discussing kingdom advancement so what is kingdom advancement the promoting of god's agenda the agenda of the king every one of us has a part to play in that ultimate promotion that's what we call purpose are you following me now your purpose on earth is your role the part you have to play to promote this universal agenda thank you jesus this is the current agenda of the king that we partner with the governor of the king having been taught the values the culture the lifestyle and you see god does god cannot send you the king cannot send you to represent him until he gives you a message until he schools you are you listening to me you must become a true citizen of the kingdom before you are allowed to go and reproduce that life that's why when god calls a man he builds that man then he sends the man that's what koinonia is all about hallelujah right now god is giving us the mindset of his kingdom helping us to understand his ways 
his operation bringing us into intimacy with the governor of this kingdom the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a pentecostal phenomenon many charismatics and pentecostals have abused him and reduced him to tongues he's the governor of the kingdom it's beyond tongues and prophecy and falling down and standing up are you following me now he's the one who gives us direction he's the captain the one who is overseeing the progress of this kingdom advancement so we have a responsibility to partner with the governor to bring many under the rule of the king that's what we call soul winning so soul winning for many people and unfortunately for many denominations has just been a strategy to add to membership hallelujah so for many denominations what we are interested in is not to have many citizens of the kingdom but to have many members of our churches so you see someone who is born again it tells you we are in the same kingdom you say no way no way if you are not under my denomination you don't belong to the kingdom interesting that's the nonsense that is going all around god is not teaching us denomination and dogma he's teaching us kingdom are you following me now that the most important thing all of the denominations are only prophetic platforms hallelujah when we understand this we'll stop discriminating ourselves because i wonder what we are going to do in heaven that big table in the last supper there's only one table the bible doesn't say there are many so you better love your neighbor because if your seat mate belongs to let's continue hallelujah and then to replicate the life and the culture of the king say after me the life and the culture of the king let me have one Yoruba person, one Igbo person, and then one Northern. And quickly, quickly, three people. Let's do that quickly, quickly. Yoruba, Igbo. Please come, come up, three of you. No, no, no. Hallelujah. Erin is from Kaduna State. She's from the East. And Ejimi is from the, what? West now listen listen all of these geographical locations have certain things are you following me now they have a common language they have a common culture they have values is that correct when a yoruba person especially a, a well it, it happens with everybody really but especially the ladies want to greet what happens they prostrate is their culture i follow me so you can see them manifesting their culture and it tells you where they are coming from is that correct when you hear them talking and they say share and all of that you know that you can't mistake in that and say it's full and hallelujah are you listening to me and then for the ebos they have i we had a sumptuous meal it reminds me of a sumptuous meal to the glory of god that we had on sunday in pastor williams house I appreciate them you don't know what i appreciate them <laughs> hallelujah i ate a very delicious soup called in salah see that that's the benefit of kingdom <laughs> hallelujah now she comes from the east and they have their culture their way of life and their language are you following me now he comes from the north hallelujah and we have our way of life praise god and now when you see these three they are ambassadors of their culture is that correct everywhere they go when you see someone at you are in washington for instance and you're going to the airport and you see somebody just proceed ah are you a she and then you, this and that, and then you just greet you know you just bow here and all of that i say are you a yoruba that's nice it connects you are you following me now please i'm trying to communicate a message i hope you understand what i'm saying so as citizens of the kingdom we have a culture that the world should recognize instantly are you listening to me when you see a yoruba person you know instantly when you see an Igbo person even if a yoruba person wears kaftan his culture will betray the kaftan he's wearing very quickly you just know this is a yoruba person hallelujah are you following me now how come there are many christians and there are few kingdom citizens it tells you that there is an understanding of the culture of the kingdom that we do not have we have many believers across 
many churches and many christians but the world is still contending whether jesus is truly king that means that the citizens of the kingdom are just doing religion and doing christianity and have not come to a point where the world can see and let me tell you the world is not supposed to see different we are representing different kingdoms and people ask i say who are you christian who are you christian they say how come two of you seem to be conflicting are you are you following me that's why we are taking this teaching because that's how the church will beam as the light to the world the bible says that there are certain traits and signs that characterize citizens that belong to that kingdom there will be something when you in bible and, and in ancient time when you saw a jew you would know instantly by their manner of worship hallelujah their dressing their language and everything they were revealing that they were jews god bless you please sit down hallelujah so our job is to first imbibe and embrace the culture now the word culture is not a demonic word i know that um in a nigerian and african context i know that there are many wrong things with many cultures all right there are very healthy sides of culture respect love for god but there are many unhealthy aspects of culture idol worship and so on and so forth allegiance to other gods and certain unhealthy practices hallelujah but then the kingdom of god has a culture that's why we sing the song your kingdom reigns you get the song now your kingdom reigns then we say above all that means there are other types of kingdoms but we're saying lord we choose to bring your kingdom above hallelujah so we say lord your kingdom reigns your governing influence is superior to every other kingdom in my life so that when you see me before you call me a yoruba person you should first call me a kingdom citizen if your earthly culture is superior to your kingdom culture then you are not a true representative of the kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement so you first receive the kingdom and then you are taught by the governor of the kingdom you are equipped he trains you hallelujah and there are four principal ways to replicate this kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement is a perfect blend of four things number one the character of the kingdom character you see that we teach about character there's no time in the church age where we need to talk about character than now we have so many anointed people anointed from head to toe who lack the character of the kingdom and our lifestyle and our character betray what we attempt to portray our praying in tongues is corrupted by a character that is not consistent with the king that we have that's why we emphasize character one way that the world will see and know that we are true kingdom citizens is by the manifestation of the character of the king galatians uh, 5 verse 22 gives us a list of what we know as the fruit of the spirit bible calls it love joy peace patience gentleness faithfulness self-control he said against this there is no law and so any citizen of the kingdom who stays enough with the governor will find himself manifesting this character suddenly you find out that you step into a system where there is hate and what comes out of you is the love of where there is sadness i love a beautiful song that says lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase hallelujah he said lord make us instruments are you following me now so when you step into a place where there is bitterness you manifest the joy of the spirit so when people see you going through the same thing with them while they are languishing and complaining they see you laughing and you're just saying lord you are faithful and they say i cannot understand what is this you just loved lost a lawman, 
And instead of you to be insulting God and talking, say, Lord, I love you. I love you now. And they cannot understand. I love you tomorrow. I love you forever. You just hear a bad report from the doctor. And instead of panicking, you say, no. There's a light in my soul. In spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light that I see only comes alive every time I hear your voice. And people begin to note your life for behaving strange. They say, that's what they saw in Jesus Christ. The moment Jesus walked, they say, who is this? The way he's teaching, his way of life, they saw him with unbelievers and instead of castigating them he was showing them love and they said what kind of person is this he began to reveal the superiority and the, a foreign culture only comes alive every time I hear your voice number two the manifestation of the anointing is one way we advance the kingdom because although we are in the world we are not of the world the world cosmos we call it the social system hallelujah the social system satan being the god of this world the bible calls him in ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 the prince of the power of the air the spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience that's the characteristic of those who are outside the kingdom disobedience and rebellion hallelujah in the world system they hail you for disobeying hallelujah as guys when you disobey people disobey parents disobey authority they say man and you're like hey you just touch your head because it's a system are you following me now it's called cosmos let me tell you where it started from it started from a man in the bible called cain the Bible says, and Cain departed from the presence of God. He came out from under the governing authority of that king. And the Bible says, Cain built a city, a type of a kingdom, after the name of his son Enoch. And all kinds of rebellious activities began to stem from that system. And then Nimrod in Genesis chapter 11 took over. And he said, let us build a kingdom. Let's build a city whose power will reach to the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves and right now what is happening in the world is the rebuilding of the tower of babel i'm going to be showing you five pillars and areas of kingdom influence thank you jesus for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding to the simple so the anointing because satan is alive there's sickness everywhere oppression everywhere hallelujah and in luke chapter 4 when jesus came he began to speak and he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth he found where it was written in the book of isaiah isaiah 61 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed he has smeared me with the holy ghost and with power he has empowered me to do the following preach the glad tidings to the poor to bind up the broken hearted to set the captives free so the manifestation of the anointing in your life helps you to begin to release the reality of the kingdom hallelujah that's why when you walk up to someone who is sick someone who has cancer and you say i bring you the superior power of the kingdom i represent these are two kingdoms standing and you demonstrate the superiority of your kingdom and say in the name of the king of my kingdom i'm standing as touching his authority i command this foreign cancer go the cancer going is proof that your king is truly king that's why miracles they are called miracles signs and wonders they point somewhere that's why we hold our miracle services that's why all of our meetings are power packed Many of you who have gone on our Facebook, I'm sure you've, you've seen the great testimony that we have, the latest really that we have right now. Very powerful testimony. Hallelujah. About two or three um, Fridays ago, a woman, not even a believer, hallelujah, came and she stood outside here. Had cancer. 
hallelujah it was acute and uh, you know it was breast cancer and they were going to cut off her breast from shika verified hallelujah and she just stood here and saw people and said what's happening here and they said it's koinonia just hearing the word like you are hearing and we're just praying hallelujah and she just stood we're touching the authority of the king and right there she just said let god you know let god heal us too now instantly she was healed i was with her on sunday we don't announce miracles that we don't verify there are medical reports to this effect verified i spoke with her i don't mean recovery instant healing and wholeness of cancer <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah demonstrating the superiority of the king so the purpose of miracles is not to make a name for the man of god or to make a name for the ministry all this nonsense that people do that's why a true servant of god will use miracles as a pointer to reveal the kingdom are you seeing that so if your miracle and your manifestation of the gift of the spirit and your operation of the anointing are not signs leading men to another who is greater than you then you are betraying the king and you are termed a rebel and we have many rebels overseeing many ministries standing in the place of christ not allowing many people to come into the kingdom and not moving themselves so they have become the jesuses for many people but every true servant of god is supposed to be an usher leading men to the king when paul went to a certain city and they saw him he performed great miracles they called them zeus and hammers the bible says paul tore his garment and said we are but ordinary people john speaking said that i may decrease so that he my king will increase and any true servant of god any true ambassador of this kingdom must live to promote the king and the king alone hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight number three prosperity the subject of prosperity has been a very very controversial one for two reasons number one people have tried and tried and tried to get wealth and it has not come they have tried to use worldly ways to get god's wealth hallelujah and they have been frustrated because it has not come and so they say just forget anybody you see blessed especially young people just know that these people are cutting corners but that's not true hallelujah zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 a says cry yet saying thus saith the lord my cities true prosperity shall be spread abroad that's in your bible cry yet saying thus saith the lord of hosts my cities true prosperity so prosperity is a weapon listen many people try to acquire wealth so that they become happy many people try to acquire wealth to prove to their parents and loved ones that they are not poor that's nonsense are you listening to me hear me when you understand the agenda of the king you will know that you really hate the king by becoming poor hallelujah for many of us our concept of prosperity is to accumulate money and have wealth and have people bow at our feet and lick our leg the bible calls such people rich fools the issue is not the rich the issue is that the person is a fool why a fool because they do not understand the purpose of prosperity the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them there are many people being destroyed by their prosperity building a wall around themselves and making money their confidence he said woe unto he that puts his strength in a man hallelujah when you want to organize a crusade We've had the privilege of organizing some crusades over the years and this crusade spend we spend money are you listening to me prosperity is a tool with all humility if there's anything you appreciate in this place it was not gotten by tongues are you listening to me the people outside are comfortable by the grace of god watching the projector you are comfortable watching in the projector you're sitting and there's light there's the fan blowing you i hope you know that all of these things have financial implications let me tell you something if you truly love god 
you will embrace his economic system to be empowered for the sake of his kingdom you cannot help the poor by becoming one of them so it's not the issue of me i don't like all these canal things carnality materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of those materials upon your life when christ is above anything in your life it does not destroy you that's why people are dying dying in haiti the throne of god is still made of gold he will never reduce it to silver And so you must believe in the wealth of the kingdom it's a tool to advance the kingdom let me tell you something do you know how many believers have bowed down to bell because of money statistics tells us that about 90 percent of divorce cases that we have even in nigeria today are directly or indirectly related to finances many of our ladies that sleep around for money do they sleep with us how much do we have as young people is it not those who have money that come and take them and we have many church people just dancing in the morning early in the morning in the morning i will rise and praise the lord and satan who is the god of that system when they finish praying they come out and they don't have food to eat and satan stands and said i will give you all this if you would just bow and the people say we preach in church and say don't bow and they say so what do i do he say i don't know but sha don't bow and the man is saying i must pay the school fees of my children the bible says any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel and we say don't be corrupt don't loot they say okay teach me god's way we say forget it don't loot and when the man is under pressure he will sign that document when the lady is under pressure she will sign and say to hell with anything and then we keep looking and say the ladies are corrupt the young people are poor the bible says the poor the rich it didn't say the rich christ the rich will rule over the poor Are you listening to me so you better undo this poisonous mindset that satan has put in believers as long as we remain in poverty there are many churches crying and knocking at the gate of government preaching lies and prophesying lies seeking favor nonsense because we do not understand that we are ambassadors of a superior kingdom for many people the wealthy people in their church have taken the place of the holy spirit and it's what they want that is being done what are we saying hallelujah and so because i gave a seed of 30 million naira, i come and tell the pastor there are some people that hate me preach on hatred the pastor says yes lord <laughs> and he comes on stage he said i was sleeping by 5 a.m and the lord told me son stand up i have a word for you and i had hatred in my spirit shout hatred can i tell you something friends i have said it people have termed it to be arrogant i'm sorry if you think it's arrogance let me tell you something the wealth and the prosperity of this ministry is not tied to any man it's tied to the direct hand of god that's why we preach the way we preach without apology we bring the uncompromising word of truth because i tell you under god we have not bowed to bear and we will not bow there is a way you eat the king's food and you cannot talk against the king you can't eat the king's food and talk against the king but we are that remnant that uncompromising generation that will stand and challenge the gods of this system that's why we are teaching what we are teaching so prosperity is very important number four it's a language many people out of their quest for humility have rejected it's called influence I want to show you how God designed his kingdom to be advanced. Influence. Look up. Let me do a little experiment. Sweet has come. All of you appreciate this lady. I mean a, a real ovation. For whatever reason, just clap. Keep clapping. Just turn. Keep clapping. Everybody. I mean clap and shout. Look at them wait hold on hold on hold on look at what is happening to her she's happy and enjoying it although she cannot understand this same character or this same attribute is inherent in 
every one of us including the religious people I've not seen anybody that frowns when they clap for him we all desire influence for parents when they call your child and the first position is you see the man sometimes trying to package himself and then he tries to find different ways of accommodating come on am I talking help me how much more the king that you represent the Bible says the hour has come John 17 verse 1 he said now the hour has come he said glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you that's how God gets glory when the sons are glorified glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you are you listening to me to reveal his glory and his majesty is found in Psalms 145 and the Hebrew word used here is called doxazo a display of his glory to let the world know and let me tell you something when you come to a position of influence let me tell you the advantage of influence the hearts of many are connected to you and at that point it's easy to change their hearts look at me do you know that if Michael Jackson just lift his hand and say I get I'm born again one over one million people can be born again instantly that's the power of influence there are many young people sagging their jeans down cutting their heads into pieces trying to look like people who have influence and the church was supposed to rise up there and create a true picture of what the kingdom represents have been allowed to chicken out let me tell you something if you do not love excellence in your life you are frustrating the agenda of the king because when you are excellent and you are competent you will gain what we call influence when you gain influence you will come to a point where you are a voice and at that point anything you say when Cecilia Ibu was having a thanksgiving the number of unbelievers that came for that thanksgiving why because they need her they don't love God like that but they need her so they had to come hallelujah and I or Richard Jaffo preached his life out he said now that I have this caliber of people let me use the opportunity and preach every devil out of them let me tell you something there are certain classes of people that your tongues will never make them come to you it's your influence the Bible says see it thou a man diligent in his business he said he will not stand before mean men he will stand before kings I was watching the Forbes Forbes um, first 100 world's richest people there's no believer in any of them about 95 percent of all of them are members of freemason illuminatis they are the ones who control the education of our children they are the ones who control everything many of you do you know many believers just say whatever will be will be this world is not our own we don't love the world the bible say for god so love the world that you are hating hallelujah are you getting blessed this is a thought-provoking teaching it's not just some church activity it's supposed to compel us to rise up hallelujah by the grace of god because of this platform that god has given us it has given us a measure of influence is that correct and that's why many of us can come i would not be able to go to all your houses one by one and call you but through the medium of influence what happens you can come around and the message of the kingdom can be communicated there are six prophetic areas where the world satan has captured god bless you sweetheart thank you very much hallelujah many people watch mtv and watch channel O, and we frown they asked one of the mtv directors one time and said how come you have influenced children of ages i think from ages eight to 16 and he laughed he said we have not influenced them we own them we own that entire generation that's what he said and it's not a lie they have designed systems let me tell you how the kingdom advances through these things mindset say after me mindset, mindset. 
the world is a system that gives you a mindset are you following me now so an average child the moment he grows up i mean the moment he is born he's exposed to a system that begins to give him a mindset let me show you six areas that the church has neglected in our churchianity and satan is using it and advancing his kingdom christianity is the only religion that holds crusades after crusade after crusade but there are many ministries and movements that hold no crusade yet they are advancing at the speed of light because they understand the structure of the kingdom number one sports sports is an area where the power of babel is being built hallelujah right now sport has become a religion i hope you understand that there are many people who have made merchandise out of sports and there are almost no ambassadors in that sector of the kingdom why because we have taught people the moment people begin to sense the anointing they tell them kai that means one day you stand on the pulpit can i surprise you hear me those you call ministers are those the bible calls the gifts that are supposed to train the ministers the ministers are those sent to these systems to represent and reproduce the life and the character of Christ. Hallelujah. Sports, number two, in the area of arts. Music, fashion. This is an area that the church has neglected. You just need to own your radio and you hear all kinds of things from morning to night. And those people have paid their price they are competent so we say so long as they don't mention satan i will listen you know i like it you come to church here it's only in church that you see people sing no rehearsals they don't do anything they just walk hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah every kind of excellence and mediocrity is found in the church whenever you hear quality sound good music everything know that it is satan who is being promoted and we sit down and watch and many times we collect offering and say lord let it be for the advancement of your king what are you saying the advancement of his kingdom is not theory are you getting blessed please because we are going to pray i'll soon stop here and then it's a series so we'll continue every time you see excellence you need to go where unbelievers are doing something that glorifies satan and you will see levels of excellence and competence they are sound they are organized they are excellent and they directly promote satan but how about it ends? mediocrity say the most important thing the voice doesn't matter it's just the revelation i say who and the keyboard is for 10 minutes he's trying to find the key punching and then he's smiling you don't provoke yourself the bible says by the truth that's what we say you are called into fashion who do you know in fashion let me i don't know anybody oh okay one person versace these are the systems you want to conquer and you do not even know them those in the world the sports people the media people those at the forefront of music and fashion day and night they are building themselves they sign contracts with satan and they keep investing in themselves you ask them where are you going they keep innovating things because they live for the glory of satan but we have many believers who cross our legs and we think god will do everything and you say i know one day the top is my portion you really think so the top is your portion how we don't invest in ourselves we just come and mumble tongues for one hour and then we say my destiny and then you go to a place and they send you out they say no job for you and you are angry why will i give you a job when you are not competent why should i give you a job when you will make my company lose are you are you am i provoking somebody let me tell you whether they draw cross with anointing oil on your head there are certain things that only competence in partnership with the holy spirit will give you believe what i'm saying i pray in tongues but we are the nehemiah generation that understand that with one hand we hold the sword but with another hand we keep beauty so many lazy believers who are not doing anything in their life you say i want to be a writer you don't know any writer 
you don't read anything about writers you don't have any article about a writer and he say one day i'll be at the top every time you see an unbelieving writer he say one day i'll challenge you you really think so am i provoking somebody number three politics and government it's an area that requires the influence of the kingdom many of the policies that punish us in this country today were enacted by people who do not understand the structure and the concept of the kingdom hallelujah and you can laugh about it and think it doesn't matter until they begin to bring into the house of assembly that they should permit gay and permit lesbians and then we say hey he's having energy he's having where the it wasn't enacted by angels it was enacted by human beings you can imagine if we have people who understand the value and the structure of the kingdom not religion men who understand the operation of the kingdom hallelujah another area business in the area of business there are many church folks we've left the business of the people who say ah business business is such an ugly thing it's a corrupt thing forget jare swindle you you see believers there's nobody that does clean business so forget about their tongues can't you be the first who will not bow and they are the ones in control of the finances and they move people wherever they want hallelujah you can sit down and see a company that has kingdom believers and your director can just look at you and say i don't like you you are fired and in an instant this guy was praying and fasting for a a, a, a boss project he suddenly changes his prayer point oh god will my life not move forward and those who have the well do not fear god they cross their legs and play believers like a chess because we do not understand that these are the structures of the kingdom and the moment they see certain people rise to that area they stand and preach and say forget all of the people that are doing this you will perish with the world are we ready for change if we are let me tell you the next revival that is coming is not going to happen in the pulpit the next set of apostles and prophets are going to be sent to these systems that's the structure of the coming revival so for many of you who are envisioning coming to stand one day here one day you will come and you will not find anybody because the believers are busy repro reproducing god's life another area family satan is killing families we do not understand that that's a system can i tell you something for those of you who are married and are in ministry or those who soon get married can i tell you something your family comes above and before your ministry hello before you were born christ has been preached after you die he will still be preached when you see an armed robber on the street he had a father and a mother correct we do not realize that according to god's principle and structure the family is supposed to be the first encounter of that child with god's life and the kingdom life hallelujah sorry let me have one sweetheart come let me use you as an example come appreciate this beautiful lady <laughs> wonderful children of pastor williams come sweetheart quick 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 hallelujah now i've had the opportunity of visiting pastor williams house again and again and i've seen the kind of love and training you can imagine these little children at their age at their age where what were you doing some of us were far from the gate of the kingdom but you can imagine when we say pray if we are praying for one hour these children are praying for one hour when we say speak imagine what this lady will do when she gets to 13 years old are you are you seeing how that family life is important there are many ministers that leave their families dying and they are running to go and save the lost they are going to take nations and their children are pioneering another move they are not aware of hallelujah is that let me tell you if you are not ready to train your children in the fear of the lord
don't get married, don't give birth. Are you listening to me? Very important. And that's one area. Satan is perverting the family life like never before. People are losing priorities. And they look at children and when they say, bring this child to church, they look, look and say, ah, ah, little children like this. But these little children can go and watch pornography at their age on the internet. And no one stops them. The parents pass and see the children and say, ah, okay, children, say with their little thing. Then one day the child tells you, Mommy, I've been the queen of the coast since three years. The queen of the coast. <laughs> queen of what? I thought you were young. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? Let me challenge parents here and prospective parents. The word train up a child does not mean discuss with them. It, makes, it means make them do it. If I'm going to church, my child is going to follow me. No matter what the argument is, we'll talk later hallelujah because rebellion the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child the rod of correction does not mean kill your child i say i will kill you bring me back bring me back and you beat the child i will match you i'm the one who will kill you by myself before you kill me i'll kill you that's not kingdom training the bible doesn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go there is a pattern that you are not the one who designed it as a parent you receive it manoah said give us the blueprint of how we will train this child hallelujah bless this lady i love you god bless you sweetheart hallelujah there are many parents that for your children the first time they hear i love you is one guy who comes with his baggy jeans and his chain with a gun on it and then he comes and says hey, how are you i love you and although the lady is really embarrassed by his outlook she cannot deny that it's a word she has always wanted to hear and then she says, I hate you, I hate you. And then in the night, she flashes him. And then he flashes her back. <laughs> then when they're about to sleep between 12 and 1, flash again, or high. Then the guy calls, yeah, I knew you would call. And later on, you find out why a nice church-going girl suddenly begins to follow someone and is corrupted. Because a family where there is no love, a family where there is no togetherness, a family where the parents are not humble to say i'm sorry when they need to say i'm sorry that kind of a family is not a true picture the first example of god should be seen in a father the first example of the holy spirit should be seen in a mother the first example of unity should be found in the couples hallelujah to train the children in the fear and the admonition of god i have a dream that after 20 years of marriage you come to my house and see us dancing and rejoicing no rat race no fighting up and down i'll forever be chasing after you that's what you hear us singing because all the laws that make for peace and prosperity and joy we are adhering to it are you getting blessed i'm provoking something the last area media right now you can just log on and browse pornography for free it has already been paid satan paid people to prove that jesus is not lord he's still paying people hallelujah you just open any a nice christian site with a little clip five minutes they say pay fifty dollars then say i'm not ready and then somebody say come and see i had an encounter with satan it's free on youtube watch hallelujah are you getting blessed the media it's just right now that there's a media revolution god is raising media giants for some of you as i mentioned this area something in your spirit says are you hearing are you hearing god is telling you are you hearing the moment the spirit of prayer began to come on you sweetheart you just say pastor who told you it's pastor maybe it's media or fashion Many of us just think ministry is about standing and you envision when you have a congregation of 5,000 members and then as you are coming, they just bring water for you and say, Daddy, sir. If that is your concept of kingdom advancement, there's need for real repentance tonight. These areas are the areas that the church have left to the world. And can I tell you something? 
our praying in tongues will never make meaning to the world until we begin to infiltrate these systems that's why we are holding this teaching hallelujah but i know we are that generation that the next set of sports people i look forward to times when before they start playing while a stadium is gathered or after doing all of those things and and scoring goals they give you an opportunity to talk to six million people and you tell them i speak under the authority of the lord whose i am and who i serve that statement alone break someone who has been mentoring your life and say this is my mentor i'll do anything he's doing and now that he has mentioned jesus what is it about jesus and they begin to search and god will lead them to a site and they will check jesus is lord.com because the media giants are already doing their work there and then you read and know let me tell you if we depend on only our fifty thousand and five hundred thousand man crusade to get people born again in the next hundred years we will not affect the world in five minutes the mindset of a generation is changed by an evil program on the tv five minutes a woman like oprah winfrey stands on tv and declares to people that jesus is not lord and in five minutes i was checking her facebook and she has six million followers six million followers on facebook hallelujah coca-cola has 23 million and i check many churches 10 5 11 22 110 300 700 and then a few hundred thousand those are the mega ministries so can you see that christianity is not a call to laziness it's a call to service are you following me so after you get born again and you get filled with the holy ghost the holy ghost trains you and then he sends you and then he begins to call you he says oh no i'm releasing you to the it industry go and challenge the people steve jobs of blessed memory he has gone wherever he is hallelujah and all kinds of people and he says i'm sending you wherever there is darkness god sends you as the light and he says go as the light and he comes and says mr Holmes, you draw and you do design i'm sending you to this industry he comes and says aaron you are an events planner and you do logistics i'm sending you to that system he says sweetheart i'm sending you to this system this is um, representing the head of department doing I'm, I'm sending you reveal my creativity i'm sending you and then we come to church and pray in tongues and build ourselves and the gifts of the church help us and bless us and equip us after church we come out that's why i don't believe in a church that holds service seven times a week that's nonsense don't stone me if for seven days in a week you are in church all the days of your life you will never affect the system because the mission field is not in the church the mission field is outside the church it say you are the light of the world not the church so we come and we are built we are equipped on monday you are at work in the bank and someone comes and while you are signing the check you see by the spirit and he says sir you've been having a challenge in your family and he looks and then you tell him i bring you the word of the lord i know that you're having a financial problem begin to tithe and be serious tithing is a principle of the kingdom and then you just turn his receipt and write your number or you write a number of a ministry he can go and say god bless you the king has found expression <laughs> hallelujah and then you are an architect and people come and give you a difficult project and you sit down and you lock yourself and say Kabo Sataba Kayaba. I'm not an ordinary person Lord I'm an ambassador make way for me and then God makes the way and in the night while you are sleeping the, the Daniel said while I slept the visions of heaven are communicated unto you and you wake up and you come up with something that will cause the government to call you the government to say how did you do it that's what happened to the three hebrew boys that's what happened to daniel the one we call belshazzar he manifested a dimension and in babylon they saw and they knew that christ was the king it wasn't because he was praying in tongues 
it was because he could translate this thing god sends you into the business world and you begin to innovate things that alleviate poverty in people's lives and you come to a point where your life is directly blessing people at that point your christianity is meaningful hallelujah and then you come to a point where you are sitting in your house and you just decide and say this week we are going to cook and call our neighbors christians or non-christians without discrimination and you put your beautiful garden because you have received god's prosperity message and so you you have killed greed too in your life and so you understand that you are not just trying to do a favor to build yourself an empire and you bring the people hallelujah let me share with you a few testimonies to the glory of god you see the people that come and and offer us free uh, uh, the bus transport let me say it to the glory of god when their leader is not a christian he was sick and his wife put to bed immediately she put to bed the protocol department were in shika we brought him gifts and we greeted them that's why we are friends with them today are you following me now they have been able to see that's why every time they come although we are praying in tongues they enjoy what we are doing they are getting blessed by koinonia because we have given them room to be employed are you following me that's that's what we call strategic apostolic reformation not just making noise in church but coming to a point where the world that as you pray in tongues because of you god gives you an idea and many people are gainfully employed even if you are not benefiting so much from it is putting food on the table of others you become a principality that the government must come to terms with there are certain people in this country who have understood this apostolic reformation bless god for their lives building universities that put in the value and the culture of the kingdom hallelujah a man called billy graham all the presidents in america from his time until barack obama they go and pay homage to him why because he has gained a dimension of influence are you listening to me he really didn't raise wheelchairs are you following me now he didn't do all the charismatic things but he understood kingdom and he gained a dimension of influence and because of him many many have come to the saving knowledge of christ rick warren who wrote purpose driven life had been invited many times to the government house to speak for many christians when we invite they invite us to the government house we are just thinking of how we we'll chop and someone who is anointed who loves god suddenly gets to the government house and he's like i beg jerry i'm coming and then you say Shaba kabarata ba 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 ba. I see that you and we begin to behave and do all kinds of things because we do not understand let me tell you as a believer everywhere you are realize that the kingdom is in search of expression through you and so you find out what can I do that will bring the kingdom to bear so you go to your community and one day you gather all the young children and cook rice for them and you make poster Jesus loves you and you hold something you must not have the name of ministry it mustn't be joshua selman international ministries we like names and we like titles we don't think kingdom unbelievers think kingdom everywhere they go their primary concern is how can the kingdom find expression he said when you pray say this thy kingdom come thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven i've made up my mind that everywhere i go the kingdom will find expression Ejimi makes shirts. Look at the beautiful shirts by the media people. This is an artistry and the creativity of one. He is a minister, but he has allowed other areas of his life to find expression and give God glory. Hallelujah. We believe in it. I'm being practical and I'm sharing this. Dio is going for a, a, a media training right now with some of the top media people in this country. Hallelujah he's going for a training he's the head of the media but it's not just about praying in tongues we realize that we have an agenda we are going we are invading the media and so he's leaving tomorrow and going for a training for a period of two weeks certified every one of these media people you see them doing what they are doing they were trained because the church is not just a place to sit down and learn a, play, a church is the place of building and any true apostolic move equips people and prepares them to be revivalists 
So on one hand we pray in tongues. On the other hand we prepare ourselves. Ibo is there. Ibi can you stand up? Quickly, quickly, quickly stand up. That's a fashion designer. That's a kingdom driven fashion designer. On his way to happen. Now he's coming and he's receiving. And he's on his way to happen. We are not just praying in tongues. Are you following me now? We are on our way to happen. So hear me. If all you are thinking about is just church and how I'll have my ministry, me and my wife, my child will be in charge of media. Change your mind and begin to think kingdom. Are you listening to me? Kingdom. Think kingdom. Many of us need to wake up this night. And as you say, your kingdom reigns above all. You say, Lord, I know you are sending me. I hear your voice. I hear your voice. I'm not born again for nothing. I realize that there is an influence of the kingdom that has been mandated upon my life. I told myself, I said, Lord, I will be competent in every area that you have sent me to represent your kingdom. And that means taking that money you are using to buy Timberland, to buy the books and the materials that will equip you for being an ambassador. All this nonsense, instant gratification. Get rich quick. We young people are in it. It's time to sit down and realize that there is a mandate of a generation upon your shoulder. And no matter what sacrifice it will take, that you say, I will do this for my king. And you sit down. How many of you guys who want to be fathers? How many of you have gone to read any book about principles of fatherhood? How many of you have gone to read any book about how to discipline children? How many of you have sat to search the word of God and find out how to train children? It's not about looking at a lady and liking her. How many ladies are ready to sit down to find out your role as a wife, a minister, and as a mother? Kingdom advancement. I was reading something about Billy Graham. And his wife told him something. She said, you are an evangelist. Go. I will support you. I will stand by you. Not all this Mr. Big's nonsense that people do. Someone says, hi. You say, I'm hungry. You have not even replied. Because that's what we watch in Nigerian films and all of this. We have been trained to believe that marriage is rest, relationship. Not knowing that you sow, you wait, and then you reap together. strategic kingdom advancement hallelujah and some of you God is calling you in the area of business you sleep and you have dreams God is giving you things and Satan is telling you I will give you this if you will just bow hear me friends we are the generals of God are you hearing me inside and outside there is a clarion call from the spirit it's time for the citizens of the kingdom to arise the greatest publicity of a kingdom citizen is to remain in the secret place and keep building keep building keep building with one hand you study the word and you learn the principles with another hand you begin to translate the realities of the spirit hallelujah we're talking with Steve and he was telling me some of his plans for the future. He would sit down and pray and God would give him songs and then he would write them. By the time he sings these songs and they are blessing, look at some of these songs that are coming from heaven. One day God will grant us access and some of you who have been called to this area of music, we will release these songs to you and you will raise it. I look forward to times when, when we tune our radio we we'll just hear your kingdom reigns. Bless God for heal song. Bless God. I love them with my life. They are real ambassadors of the kingdom. Real ambassadors of the kingdom. They have no apology for exalting the name of God. If I have a company today, you will hold Bible study at least once a week in my company. You are not interested. It's not by force. When poverty cains you because there will be darkness out there. And we will pay in such a way that you, you cannot reject us. We are going to buy MTV. We are going to buy Channel O. Oh, we will. We will. We will change it to Miracle TV. <laughs> we are not praying in tongues for nothing, friends. We may not look like it. But let me tell you, it's in you. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. 
we are rising our parents like the eli generation have done their best and they are transferring the button to the samuels and we will carry it and represent the kingdom a time will come they will come and meet you and someone will want to bribe you and you hold back his hand and not just say no i don't do it you say no i represent a kingdom don't just say i don't do it someone comes to meet you and says can you come to my hotel I say no i don't do it what you are just trying to say is that uh, i don't do it with you you must let the person know that i represent a kingdom and i'm bounded by a modus operandi and part of it is that we are not engaged in this i have a king and i pay an allegiance to him hallelujah Ejimi does designs when you tell him to do a design for you that is pornographic or has anything that is anti-god he will not do it because you like him you will change your mind ha. i look forward to a time when the world although they don't like us they cannot deny the impact we are bringing that's the time at that time we will gather on sundays and pray and every time we are praying although they do not understand what we are saying they cannot deny the effect is telling on their salaries is telling on the economy you come and meet someone working in your office and like joseph the person is depressed and he said what happened he said i was just told i have cancer and he said come with me as the manager of the company say in the name of the lord jesus cancer go and the person is healed and he said i thought it's only in church and he says to let you know that the kingdom of god is advancing hallelujah now i want to make an altar call gone are the days where people just cajole people you know when people come like this i know many of you have heard of the miracles many of you will experience it god wants us to experience it but let me tell you this i have noticed that most of those who live long are not miracle workers in fact most healing evangelists did not cross 80. yes it's true those who really really enjoyed the grace for longevity are people who are interested in the souls of people hallelujah now nothing wrong with miracles we're going to be experiencing the hand of god shortly but it came strong upon i've been concerned about the fact that there are people who are really going to hell it's not a lie it's true whether you believe it or not it's not the issue i can argue that there's no oxygen in the air it does not stop it there are some of you looking at me right now the overflow the truth of the matter is that at your current state without missing words it is true that it is not heaven you are going to the goal is not to scare you this is not the issue of scaring is is the truth there's nothing to scare you about it is true and books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life listen carefully whosoever's name it's on earth yet that we celebrate people apostle joshua selman whosoever's name was not found he was not asked why his name was not there if your name was not there that's the end of it are we together listen look this is a very serious serious issue there has to come a time in a man's life when you break your pride and say jesus i need you i don't care whether you have been a preacher for donkey years i'm not asking you how many sick bodies you healed i'm not asking you what name your members call you are we together there are people outside overflow one two three the truth is there are people who need jesus christ and a day is going to come whether we like it or not that day the very judge of the earth is coming it's coming if he said it in his word then it is true mm -hmm. come out and be serious with god be serious with god it's amazing how people come out for altar call they come out for altar call and you see them playing around and you know they are not serious i'm not saying you must cry but there is an attitude of seriousness you don't play games with god are we together i want you to run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain because there really is one two
apostle I'm ready to break my pride and humble myself it's not a call to condemnation let me tell you brothers and sisters make your way I've cried for my own life my own life as a man of God I've cried and rolled in the presence of God crying for my own life so don't don't think that this is just some showmanship three make your way it's not by force it's not compulsory you can choose to sit down but you can choose to say let tonight be that night Lord you have to win this war over my life four the Holy Spirit is still speaking to people you may have money you may have anointing you may have cars but let me tell you this the Bible says if your hope is only in this life you are of all men of all politicians of all businessmen of all men of God miserable there has to be a cry from your heart Lord I need you is a sign of humility is there someone still joining them very quickly I want to pray your coming to Jesus means I am ready to close the door to all the friends and personalities in my life that are not ready to head my direction your coming to Jesus is a revelation that Lord I am ready to be serious with you it's not just you are coming as a preamble to receiving a miracle and then you run back no in plenty and in none leaving you is no longer an option in my life hallelujah I want to lead you some of you are crying let me tell you this if you have any loved one who is not saved I hope their names are in your prayer request because I know that some of us if I ask you what is on your prayer request now the only thing is wife husband promotion and and there's nothing wrong with that but let me tell you this is is funny but from heaven you will still see your loved ones in hell you will know they are the ones it's not that you are going to look at them and say i don't know i don't it's a lie you will know that this one is my mother this one now you can't do anything about those who have gone but there are people now you know in your neighborhood around your life It is the Lord's desire that all men be saved. Please, if you are a pastor here, take the issue of soul winning seriously. Be careful. All these things we learn around in the name of mentorship. I believe in men. Be careful. Many people are veering off. There is, a, there is a path that brings power and grace. At the end of your life, you don't want to be a wise master builder. Be, be careful. The flamboyant does not necessarily mean God is there. Be careful. Especially for some of us who are younger ministers, we must be wise. You don't just swallow everything hook, line, and sinker just because it is being done. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There are churches where an altar call is not made for more than two years. Then one day they organize one hilarious, pretentious revival and then just draw one or two people. It's a joke. It's a joke. More than healing, more than miracles, more than getting a job, more than all of this is the eternal destiny of men. I am interested in knowing that I'm not praying for someone going to hell. It's a waste. I'm interested in knowing that I'm not teaching someone a principle to prosper when he's already gone to hell. It's a waste. I will teach you about the finances and the kingdom life when we know that your eternal destiny is secure. Those of us who are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, just one prayer before I pray for them. Lord, make me serious with you. Make me serious with you. Please pray. It's a very serious prayer. There are some of us, you are not going to hell, but the truth of the matter is you are not serious with God. No. Mm -mm. There's nothing about God that, that can steal your passion. 
is not priority. You see people function in the house of God and you say, oh, these ones, is because they are called into ministry. There's no such thing as that. It's your hunger. Especially for some of us sisters, we have to pray. Lord, make me serious with you. I don't care how many men like you. I don't care what they have told you. If you are not serious with God, your life is in shambles. It's true. Lord, make me serious with you. Let nothing else sustain the ability to take your place in my life. That's a very good prayer. Hallelujah. Come live in me. Oh my Lord. Take over. Come live in me. And I will You are a parent here yeah? when your children get to the age of discretion the moment they can think and they can understand lead them to Jesus consciously it is very responsible lead them to Jesus if you have not done so as you go back home don't just say my children are smart call them preach the gospel to them the moment they, are, they can think they should be born again please be take let nobody stay in your roof you have a neighbor that is squatting with you he's not serious it doesn't matter no it does no it does no it does they can choose to reject jesus that's all right no one goes to hell because he's a sinner everybody goes to hell because he rejected jesus that is the sin that takes men to hell i rejected him i had a choice but I rejected him. Jesus, carry your load and walk out of my life. Those of you in front here, I truly appreciate you. Whatever you have in this life, if Jesus is not above, it is useless. Let me just tell you the truth. I want to lead you in an honest prayer. I know some of you are crying. Overflow, one, two, three. Those online, please listen. I'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul. I'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees. All those things are useless when you are no longer here. I'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. Listen to what you are saying and pray it loud. Are you ready now? Say after me with all your heart, passionately, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. This night, I make up my mind and I make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity. I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. I declare that my sins are forgiven. I declare that the life of God eternal life is mine today Holy Spirit I receive you as the life of God in my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God forever let me pray for you Father I thank you for these ones they have unashamedly come the Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men I'll be ashamed of you before my father Jesus speaking Lord these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace I ask you oh God you who is the helper of us all help them I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you the grace to live a victorious Christian life the grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you 
in the name of Jesus Christ every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate every one of you not listen I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ there are a number of you those in here I just want you to walk out this way and then the various overflows I know that there are people attending to them they will have your details I praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service I salute you thank you so much for your courage your life will never be the same God bless you please direct them make sure someone is directing them make sure someone is directing them hallelujah amen please sit down hallelujah there are two ministries that i believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension two very great anointings i really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth number one is the healing ministry i believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry i'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night the healing ministry is very important it played a major role the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the christ himself the second ministry that i believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance is true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say i believe that god has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant god releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um is just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that i am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together yes so god must first walk upon our hearts it's the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in zaria angelic feathers gold dust silver dust you know people started having these strange encounters and one i remember one night the lord told me he said i'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry it didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn people will go to pray and for hours all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality and god said no if i don't take it away one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so god withdrew that experience god only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so god will not release it until the body is taught the money is safer with bill gates 
is safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds they are better treasurers for god than us so all it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming but not not some money monger kind of thing it won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6 i study the gospels a lot because the ministry of jesus inspires me he's the greatest model that i have and i like to i like to study his idea what did he do what was captured in his ministry luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19 luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 this is jesus now having the sermon on the mount okay i'll just read it from here and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all judea and jerusalem and from the sea coast of tyre and sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so we see the kind of people that came for Jesus' meetings those who were sick they were sick terribly diseased they came to listen to him there was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of God so they came to hear and to be healed the second category of people we see they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed unclean spirits the source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits and the Bible says and the whole multitude listen sought to touch him why for there went power out of him to heal them I love the ministry of Jesus so the Bible tells us why the people got healed that there was power other versions say virtue there was something that Jesus had that will leave him into the people and the moment it entered them they would discover that their sicknesses were gone are we together hmm. Acts chapter 10 when you read verse 38 Peter was teaching that was a salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power listen it says who went about doing good went about doing good went about doing good so we see other things that jesus did that were not captured he didn't just heal the sick alone he didn't just deliver the oppressed alone he went about doing good breakthrough is a good thing restoration is a good thing he went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry. And, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the Spirit himself without measure, so that we can partake of that Spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe 
that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The father sent me. I now send you as the father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and they're wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results. At some point in this service, we should see the superiority of light over darkness. Is that true? At some point in this service, God should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this, just like that. Is that true? If that happens, then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me, brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time and we are wasting the time of God's precious people. That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service. Because you have not just come to watch a man. You have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you're in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor then the doctor begins to prescribe and this is what is happening to us an extension of the ministry of jesus let's look at one scripture mark chapter 1 21 Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, still the ministry of Jesus, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. It's interesting how Jesus held his crusade. He would take out time, not just to preach, but to teach. Jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive. Are we together? If the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone, it, it becomes volatile. The people receive it and then it just evaporates. But when they are taught, it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received. You can lose something you have received. It's true. You can lose healing. Demons can leave people and re-enter them again. But when the word of God is taught, it gives you the basis are we together now? So Jesus taught in their synagogues. We're reading. It's, it's a long reading. Let's see how far we can go. Just keep, just continue. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. 23. And there was in their synagogue. I love Jesus. See how his miracle service was. As soon as he just finished preaching. It was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom. And there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit. And the demons began to cry out, 24, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? We know who you are, the Holy One of God, and so on and so forth. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. This is Jesus for you. This is Jesus for you. Because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him 
this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure they were designed to respect some people and disobey some people are we together they understand ranking in the spirit so when you issue a command as jesus did and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion are we together yes it is it truly is proof of dominion look at jesus used this the people were astonished they said our priests and rabbis didn't do this they couldn't do this i hope you know that while all the priests used to preach that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing but the words were not potent enough to force them to leave so they kept coming service after service may you not be a man of god that cohabits with demons and that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting and the demons that cause poverty failure whatever it is you share the grace and they share the grace with you and you go out no sir Haba. what then is the excellency of light over darkness your presence should discomfort the gate of hell so well that there is no pretending about it that's why some of you bring people here you notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening they want to run away it's not them it's not them the devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again but tonight the devil is a liar it's too late really it's too late 28 and immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about galilee and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john let's see what happened and simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her now jesus is healing we saw him cast out devils he's about to heal now and he came and took her by the hand i love jesus and lifted her up and how many how long immediately. immediately do you know if jesus did not touch her she would remain like that and you would think it's the will of god don't trivialize an anointed hand goodness jesus walks in and says i'm introducing something to this woman's body that until the arrival of that thing the condition does not change that contact the bible says immediately the fever did what that means the fever was a living thing it could move abba is it, are you not intelligent people the fever left pastor alpha left me before jesus came the fever was with her they gave it all kinds of interpretation jesus look at what jesus did he didn't talk he just touched the bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak just by making contact alone are you seeing that now some it was about the transference of virtue and it forced the spirit there was a separation that means 
the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you are you getting what i'm saying now yes that means that growth that swelling is a sign that there is something with you ah but the hands of jesus extended through us you see that I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you that means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body and just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go there is an agency that will separate you from that pile you will call it a miracle there is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated look at it immediately not slowly so the question is not whether you can be healed the question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit because when it happens the bible says immediately and she was so healed she went straight to the kitchen straight to the kitchen from a bed and he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set like koinonia now they brought unto him that means there was an information that had reached town that when we bring certain people to this man there was something about him that was able to heal them they brought unto him all that were what diseased and them that were possessed with devils see the kind of people that came to jesus as a man of god if these kinds of people are not coming to you it's not the issue of i'm not called into this ministry something is wrong because they should discern that the hand of god upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of jesus and should make them bring certain people there are there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again then you create it not everyone may be sick but let me tell you something everyone needs the hand of god there are some of us our heavens are closed totally and don't act as if it's not important nobody is favoring you no open door you are born again but your life and your door and destiny is closed can you trust god to open this door for you it's not by might it's not by power you heard the testimony of of uh, joy she said an uncle who does not even call her something made that uncle call brothers and sisters because that uncle also has relatives somewhere everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him what makes him to leave them and come to you no are we blessed one question i'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray are you truly tired of the situation you see there's something i think i was sharing with i can't remember who i was sharing this with i was saying pain it was you Jimmy. pain is very important sometimes the only way to let people see your is allow that pain don't stop it because there are people if you have not been pushed to the wall you will not see the need for god for as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you you will not see the need to be serious so sometimes god deliberately allows it and that pain the day five of your children said daddy is this how we'll continue you just get up and say i'm coming for koinonia today I'm, I'm tired of this that pain was an indication that something is wrong and that it needs remedy fast pain there are people who will never run and come to god but you just press one side of your stomach and you just feel ah something is growing what is this next week the thing increased you told the doctor just touch it and say, ah, i don't want to tell you the name pain just say when is that miracle service said the power of god is real it can produce miracles it will produce miracles in your life tonight do you believe it i expect that not only would god heal the sick not only will he cast out devils listen carefully i expect that tonight by his spirit he will lift you out of certain captivities lack of favor 
delay there are some of us you are trusting god to return certain things that left your life for years whoever told you it cannot you heard the lady that said they stole her phone they came with matchet and stole her phone i remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a matchet foolish thieves they don't know that a body without a spirit is dead The same way you have been carrying a certificate that's the body where is the spirit component that's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin but when the spirit component comes let me tell you this god never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted a spirit entity must assist you even you if you meet a herbalist that herbalist is not alone there is a spirit assisting him you see that yes don't walk through life by your strength and power please help them life will be too hard for you this is the mystery of hardship rejecting the assistance of the spirit i would dare not do ministry without the spirit what else will i be doing but with god with god all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone Jesus said, I'm not alone. All these miracles you see, I'm being assisted. Brothers and sisters, the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance. The realm of the spirit is in partnership. You can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside, shouting at overflow. No, no. Habba. Words are not hammer. But when the spirit is upon them, that word will enter you like a drug. And all of a sudden, you will find out that certain things will go. <laughs> It will work in Zaria, it will work in Lagos, it will work in London, it will work in Saudi Arabia, it will work everywhere. Are we together? Mm. The spirits that oppress us must give way. I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive. The most important thing is not the ministrations as it were. The most important thing is creating this expectation. Many of us come and we are just hoping. Um, okay, God, I know you will bless me. In the name of Jesus, may God lift you. Amen. I just, well, it was a nice service. And you go back and nothing happens. You keep watching people come to testify. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, there shall be a performance. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord. I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart. You are sick. Get ready to be healed. Don't, don't, don't say, well, let's watch and see. Get ready to be healed. You are oppressed of the devil. You may not even know you are oppressed. You just know that nothing is working in your life. I want you to be tired and say, God, will you bring me here? So especially for those of you who came so far, Lord, will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that? There are some of you in ministry, you came to contact fire. Lord, will you leave me? Will I leave my members, my fellowship and come back here and go back? No evidence of favor. I believe him. I believe that he's a mighty man. I believe he's awesome. I have seen his hand. I have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen I present to you the same God yesterday today forever I present to you the same healer yesterday today forever I present to you the same deliverer I present to you the one who took Joseph from the prison overnight I present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle. I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus. I present to you your destiny changer. I present to you your destiny maker. I present to you the anointer of men.
the one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life I present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child I present to you the one who can give you influence can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder a specimen an epistle of his hand that's the God I present to you I have given a very nice speech we're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel oh no no he said who art thou mountain who art thou mountain who art thou infirmity who art thou delay who art thou stagnation before Zerubbabel he said before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain Lift your hands, I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace, I'm about to pray, for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three and those online Lord I release an impartation for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus I stretch my right hand and I decree and declare step into a new level of favor 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 we need favor in our lives most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve i say it again in the name of Jesus every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry I release upon you an oil of favor take it now in the name of Jesus take favor take favor receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ a strange dimension of favor favor that will surprise you favor that will accelerate your life when a life listen to me when a life has no favor it is clear the proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life not the absence of money you can have money you can have intellect you can have a job but when there are no men in your life you don't have favor the proof of favor is not the coming of money the proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life in the name of jesus christ 
I decree and declare that the men that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor, I prophesy them upon you now. I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business, upon your job, upon your projects. May men arise to help you. Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Abba. Is it charm? What is on you is what brings things to your life. It's not what you want. It is what is on you. In the name of Jesus, that anointing that must come on you, I declare that it comes on your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Producing strange results. It comes upon your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Just follow me. Some of you don't know how you need favor. You know you need favor, but you don't know what extent. I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor. You will never be able to be happy on earth. No. I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard can you help me with some money and I looked at him I said you are not a wise gentleman I know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor. I said, let's do an experiment. I told him, I said, I will pray for you for favor. Return next Friday and tell me what happened. If nothing happens, I will give you money. Agreed? He said, yes. And I prayed for him and he went. Brothers and sisters, on Monday, Monday, that's the Monday after, that gentleman sent me a text. And he said, his uncle, that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you? Enough to see that you rise. It takes favor. Can I pray that prayer for you again? In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, you have done your best. You have done your efforts. You have struggled. It's almost killing you now. Receive the grace for favor. Receive the grace for favor. May your life change by favor. Receive the grace for favor. Hallelujah. 
it is favor that brings resources it is favor that brings opportunity there are many gifted people there's no one to reward them there are many nice people many wonderful musicians nobody to place a demand on their grace it's so annoying when you see someone you are better than but he has favor and you don't and yet you have to say yes sir her man did not think Mordecai was good enough but favor and he said everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai bow the knee Mordecai is passing yes a gatekeeper you may not like a person but when favor is on them it will veto whatever you think I pray for you again every door that must open in this season to validate favor I command it to be open now I command it to be open now listen you're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's Nigeria you're not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you're not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he would trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen sometimes eh it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make boasts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute I want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate Lord I release favor concerning this job pray I release favor I release favor favor concerning my building project I release favor are you praying favor you surround us with favor like a shield you surround us with favor like a shield pray make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus favor like a shield my academics pray favor over my job Lord favor 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 hallelujah listen let me tell you the truth you see ba this prayer you are praying if this prayer is truly answered in your life this is how you will stand 
what is this this favor prayer you see there are people who have touched of this favor they can tell you favor is fearful in its operation is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey Jimmy I want to give you water what that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we're mistaking goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so i'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because the lord wants to bless the works of our hands listen whether you are on a job or whatever it is you see these hands you see they are it's a mystery it says the the hand of god it was with this hand god made man are we together now this hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does god open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek god when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give god your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship, not just hours of petition in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow 2. There's someone, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on someone, overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. Bring the lady. Hello, him out of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please, quickly. We have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him out of Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, Himma, 
Adonai. There is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Well, The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus, remove that evil you have put now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm about to pray. And I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen. There will be such a massive, massive, massive deliverance. Now, let it not surprise you. I've explained to you what this thing is. It's a separation. You should rejoice when it happens. Because it means that you are entering a new season. 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 A new season.
supernatural whether the earth whether fire that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three i command those ordinances set on fire one two three let there be liberation right now every family covenanted to the waters covenanted to the air to trees i set you free now And I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to all your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty complete liberty Overflow 3, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow 3. Don't worry, you, you, they, you, you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow 3, just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. 
at the count of three overflow three i want you to shout the name jesus because i'm seeing swords that's what i'm seeing and the lord is bringing a massive massive breakthrough massive deliverance in the name of the lord jesus overflow three are you ready i'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you right now in the name of jesus everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout jesus one two three supernatural liberty supernatural liberty an outpouring of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray for the sick shortly hold on guys hold on hold on hold on please i want to pray the lord is showing me something that is very interesting the lord wants to break cycles there are people every season certain things happen every september somebody must die every three three years somebody married must divorce in the name of jesus lift your hands you don't have to ask whether or not you are involved don't worry the anointing will look for you i decree and declare right now in the name of jesus the power that activates cycles demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves in the name of jesus i stretch my hands call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear god is not done with you i look at you and i see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if i don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i command that devil let her go now in the name of jesus christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what god will do one two get ready three the chain of circles be broken cycles cycles of failure cycles of miscarriages cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the spirit be broken now hallelujah be broken now i want to pray um please this man i don't know who the this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick i may not have time to prophesy to individuals i'm standing near this lady and i'm seeing a snake this is what I see in the name of Jesus. I curse that devil. I'm not seeing a human being. I'm seeing a snake. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Overflow one. I'm seeing the power of God. This I just mentioned snake. And I was seeing serpents. Just moving at overflow one right now i'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what i'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said i give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir i want to pray for you i don't know whether you came here for us Yes, you have been but, coming here uh, but i was tra i traveled before that so i have not been coming i want to pray for you yes sir if i don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you i'm looking at you and i'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you you love jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh yes, uh, is that true yes sir Looking at you and i'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes sir that thing is a charm yes it's sir. not half it's charm yes. native yes. doctor yes sir huh? yes, that's sir. what will even kill you yes, sir. it's not going to solve your problem yes sir the people doing it are well-meaning yes sir. but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, and you violate it will destroy you yes, sir. can i pray for you you have you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you listen let me tell you 
when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is is you are facilitating your destruction if satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of god i pray for this man let him not die in the name of jesus i close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of jesus christ i pray for you sir the lord perfects you in jesus name i pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting i'm looking at her and i'm seeing something agnes god is not done with that guy or that young man with blue please if you are not agnes don't come here please your name is agnes where are you from i need to pray for you i'm seeing an attack on your life this attack is coming from calabar huh are you hearing what i'm saying sir. i have to pray for you where are you from cross river you are from cross river yes sir. Come. i must pray for you Kai. there is somebody the lord is setting the person free i'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person you are here now in the name that is above all names i'm serious don't think i'm just hyping you in the name of jesus whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist in the name of jesus because that person you keep seeing death dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I'm going to pray for you. And then we are going to pray for the sick right now. Ah. There is some serious deliverance. I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit. This is, this is, this is a serious... Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you. I love you, eh? I love you, and that's why I'm telling you this. You need, you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up. Hmm? I'm not going to say everything I'm seeing, but you have to be careful because it's God that saved you now. I'm seeing something, a virus. Anyway, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray for your daughter. Help her by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree. And that tree is this lady. And something that was planted. And the Lord is saying uproot it. I uproot this thing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I uproot it now. The spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State. I've never been there physically, but I'm seeing Benway, Benway, and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command an uprooting. Every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be an uprooting. 
and uprooting and uprooting and uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life. Very bad luck. And the Lord wants to help you. Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bad luck be gone. Now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord help you. Come, my dear. Let me pray for you. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Our time is gone in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some, my spirit is heavy to prophesy, but because we have to, I want us to pray for the sick so that I can just make those declarations. We may not have time for one on one prophecy, but I'm telling you, God wants to touch, touch a lot of people. My dear, I want to pray for you in Jesus' name. The Lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what i'm praying for you for i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the lord is saying i should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me i prophesy it over your life in the name of jesus christ who is this who agnes agnes where is she Abuja. Abuja, sir. your sister yes father in the name of jesus i pray for this lady where is she Abuja, sir. she loves jesus yes sir in the name of jesus christ pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her eh? in the name of is she married huh in no. the name of uh, whatever it is in the name of jesus christ may god help you mama come let me pray for you it's your season of breakthrough come is this your child come boy come i'm looking at this boy and i'm seeing that god is going to use him this is a small boy boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but i'm going to pray for him samuel did not know that he will become a great prophet one day when eli he was just an innocent boy i'm going to pray for him Mama, please stand up. I will pray for you. Look at me, ma. Please don't be embarrassed. But the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life. This thing they call in house a wahala. God wants to take it from your life. You are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord. But this, this cause of hardship. Um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart. Father, you, what's, what's the name of this boy? Riba. Huh? Lifted. Okay. Your name is Lifted? Yes. Father... I lay hands on lifted in the name of Jesus Christ use him mightily we are all products of your grace lift him and use him mightily in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ mama I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and I'm telling you this the month of April is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. The month of April is your month of breakthrough. Azuka, come. Lift the camera first. Let me pray for you and then you keep the camera. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing a big project coming for you. And this project is going to lift you. This is something that has to do with your snapshot. But God is bringing someone. It's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door. And truth, you have been faithful. You have even been serving in this house. But I want to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift him. Take him to that dimension of grace. I release that anointing upon you. It will no longer be an ordinary camera. I call forth men that will lift you. I command it so. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ 
wonderful people, beautiful ladies, but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell. Jeketos kata pakaria kato zibre andakata. Jebros katos kete katambre akata. In the name of Jesus Christ, I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of the accuser. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick now. Listen, I know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting God for healing and miracle. Let me pray for this lady. How many of you have your prayer request? Now lift it up. Ushers, your prayer request. Those online, make sure we collect it. This, this lady, let me have her hands. Lord Jesus, let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently she'll be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please will be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping let your heart be open are we together number two accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because i'm i'm literally sensing as if i want to throw up is the spirit of prophecy there's there's something that the lord is putting in my spirit to release and that's why i want to pray for the sick quickly so that we'll pray this prophecy if we do this i'm satisfied in this service we have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time hallelujah jesus someone please help with collecting the request make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving as contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautifier my beautifier you have taken away taking away the shame taking away the pain
Ipochuku, Ipo Kimadue, Ipochuku, Ipo Kimadue, Ipochuku, Ipo Kimadue, Ipochuku, Ipo Kimadue.
miracle walker, from this keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle walker, from this keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation in the name of Jesus Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer 
So Lord, I transfer the trust of your people to you. The one who is able to meet every need. And on the strength of the grace that only comes from you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The resurrected Lamb. The one who is most victorious. I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, as I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus, that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge. Every challenge. Every challenge. No matter what it is, I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. No matter what it is, no matter what it is, provided it found its way here, in the name of Jesus Christ, the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony. The same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony. There are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered. May they lack the sleep. There are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done, but I just felt drawn again to it. Whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle, that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere. May the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. As long as God grants me the grace, I will never stop prophesying over you. It is the greatest thing I think I can do. If I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God, I may not be able to accurately address everyone. But when it comes to prophecy, everyone can receive. Are we together now? Wherever you are, you can receive. You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says, everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the measure of grace. There are some things this anointing can do. And let's trust God that it happens in your life. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that for everyone here, who started this year in tears already that from january february you've not known joy i declare that as this week ends that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too the bible says no weeping endures for a night it says for joy comes with the morning i decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say lord i've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the god i serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting god for a better job in the name of jesus between now and March miracle service, return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is, you've been kept at a level. In the name of Jesus, I open the doors for you. Rise to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every 
manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay i command speed to your life i speak speed to your life i prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of jesus christ i decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever i pray for those in business here i speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of jesus christ i pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen God correct things in strange ways here I command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result I don't care how long in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we correct it right here. Anyone here involved in any kind of project, building project, whatever major project, you or your loved ones, I decree and declare the finisher's anointing come support that project. In the name of Jesus Christ. let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the bible says believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe god will surprise you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you i give you two weeks from today in the name of jesus christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again i prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to god a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to jesus through you i release that grace over you i release that grace over you i release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through joshua selman in the name of jesus those hands that are stretched towards me I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of Jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house I release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of jesus christ whoever needs to make peace with you i decree and declare the grace of god compels them to make peace with you hallelujah who 
whoever has been directed by God to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I cleared the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you We're rounding up. Whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you, I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow i will do something then in the night something happens in the name of jesus everything your eyes have seen i put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen i put it in your hand hallelujah finally i call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country i don't know how god will make them meet you but i declare they must meet you in the name of jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of Jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight i stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of jesus christ give jesus a clap Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. 
As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.